Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders. How you guys doing? As you know, uh, I'm out in San Luis Obispo here. Uh, next couple few days, I'll be here uh, out for a macaroni and cheese festival. Just trying to have some fun, guys. Living the, the traveling trader's life, if you will. Uh, and then Sunday, I'll be back in Pennsylvania for a few days. And I'm back out in Arizona for a little bit. Uh, then I'm back in Pennsylvania and then into New York for a couple days. And then finally, I think it's June 25th or June 26th, I'm flying to Japan to see my wife and kids they're over there so you can see guys this is a lifestyle that you couldn't live with a traditional job and that's why i love it so much and it's also a reason why i go over my trades with you guys uh, almost every day so you guys can see the money that is being made and remember i'm doing this with a small account and i'm doing this with a low level risk uh, in two or three months and by the end of the year you're going to see some of these 400 500 days are going to be three and four thousand dollar days so i want you guys to notice that and see that but i want to take a couple minutes uh, and go over a few trades that I took today, one on SJM, NXPI, and FTI today. Um, I will throw in um, a little bit of a montage of some of the P&Ls from the trading day. I did record the open, but uh, I just didn't want to put a 90-minute video out there for you guys. Uh, so I figured I'd cut it down to about 10 or 15 minutes. So I'm going to talk about the trades that I took. And then, like I said, uh, we'll throw just a little little bit of a montage in there uh, of some of the live open P&Ls. And I feel this is really helpful, not just for me, but, but for you guys as well, to see somebody who's genuine, somebody who you can see my account number there, uh, and you can see my p and in fact, we'll put this up right now, guys, if you just we'll leave it up the status bar there. OK, you can see I made two hundred and three dollars and twenty four cents today. It wasn't a great, great day. And again, we were that close to making another thousand or fifteen hundred. Um, but we have a plan and we follow that plan. And whatever that plan says to do is what we do. OK, because that's what makes money consistently. The, one of the problems I see with most traders, guys, is you're not a trader, you're a gambler. So you want to know why this industry has such a bad reputation. One, because most of the educators out there lie. Um, but two, so much of the marketing, and I'm guilty a little bit too sometimes, but so much of the marketing um, is on get rich quick and this and that. And so you see a lot of people say, well, it's a bunch of shysters and it's a bunch of gamblers. And there's truth to that. There are shysters and there are gamblers. The average trader trades like a gambler okay the reason the house in vegas always wins is because they have a system with a positive expectancy true they have a slight edge not a huge edge a slight edge over the client over the customer okay and when you have that edge all you have to do is apply that edge to one hand of blackjack or uh, uh, yeah five hands of blackjack ten hands of blackjack a hundred hands of blackjack well trading is no different see you could lose one or two trades. You could even lose five or 10 trades. But over the course of 100, 200, 500, 1,000 trades, the positive expectancy and the odds come back into your favor. But they only come into your favor for one way, one reason. And you know what that reason is? Sorry, guys. What that reason is? Consistency. You have to have a plan that's very specific, detailed, and you have to be disciplined enough to follow that plan. If you're not disciplined enough to follow the plan, you're never gonna make money in this business. And you wanna know why most traders fail? It's because they look like gamblers when they are trading. So basically, they are gamblers. So I'm doing these videos to show you guys a systematic, specific, disciplined approach to trading. And some people will say, well, geez, Jared, you had 900, 1,000 open P&L today. You only ended up with $200. You messed up. I didn't. I followed my rules. And my rules have proven over 15 years in this business, and I used to be on Wall Street before that, that I'm right. Very few traders can say that they're profitable over that period of time. Guys, I'm profitable because I'm disciplined. And the reason I'm able to be disciplined is because I have a trading plan that matches my personality style, okay? I'm a, a somewhat of a jittery trader, a little bit of a nervous trader. I shoot for small targets, one and a half to one, occasionally two to one on my targets, okay? I've taken $2,000, 2,165 specifically, and I've turned it into over 51,000 in one year, okay? Real P&Ls, not some Photoshop crap, okay? Real P&Ls. I've taken 2,500 and turned it into over 100 grand in one year. So it's not the size of your account that matters. It's how disciplined you are. And I'm showing you guys that now. So again, you'll see by the end of the year, I'll be making two, three, four thousand dollar days at times. You'll be seeing $20,000 months at times. Wouldn't you like to make 250 grand a year? 
live this life. Guys, I have a beautiful ocean view right there. I'm in San Luis Obispo, California. I flew in on a private jet and I'm leaving on a private jet, guys. Trading has afforded me a lifestyle that most can only dream of. I took my trading profits, turned it into big time industrial real estate, and I took that industrial real estate and multiplied it from one to now seven properties, guys. Eight figures all day long, okay? You can do it too. And I started as a humble trader. All right. And I do this. I do this for fun, guys. I, I don't need to trade. I, I love trading. It's great for long term investments. It's great for understanding the stock market, your 401k, your pension, and also great for making some income. So let's check out these trades real quick, guys. Let's go through the montage real quick and then we'll come back and we'll take a look at these trades. Um, SJM. SJM under uh, 97 is actually kind of interesting, guys. SJM. Um under 97 wow we got to give a thing a dollar that's a wide stop um on sjm let's stalk it guys sjm shit right right here if you can get it guys short sure. sjm 97 by 98 97 by 98 sorry guys that happened quick um think We'll see. Wow, this thing is whippy. Wow. Um, guys, I'm going to break even on it. That thing went a nickel from 1R. I'm out, guys. I'm out, SJM. FTI, I'm going to do a 20 cent stop on F FTI. Um, guys. All right, 33. 33 by 3280 guys 33 by 3280 on FTI okay here it is FTI 33 by 3280 it's similar to Yates's play but a little bit later his is a little bit better and I hate to say it but do I have to do this again Guys, my order is still in for NXPI. I have not canceled it, so my order is still in for NXPI. Uh, there goes FTI, guys. I got filled at 02. That sucks. That really sucks. Not at all what I wanted to see. All right, NXPI, guys. NXPI triggered. I should have. Uh, FTI is testing my patience. If I'm being honest, I am very tempted to walk away from this thing. Actually, I'm probably going to move the stop to 3290 uh, if it breaks the high. If this thing gets up to 3305, see this little five minute three bar play, guys? Right there. See that? If we break the high, I'm going to raise my stop to 3290 on the five minute three bar play. If. All right, we got to break that that high first. Okay, um, so we'll see what happens there. Um, I'm gonna start scanning. I hate to say it, don't want to really do it, but I'm gonna start to uh, start scanning. We are 18 minutes into the day, and I'm gonna start scanning. FTI again. If it gets over the high of the day, I think there's a chance. I mean, it's it's the right spot. It's the right spot on FTI. It really is. It's just. Can it get over that area? Come on, NXPI. All right, NXPI officially, officially, okay, is break even. Okay, officially. Um, you know what I need to do here. Okay. Come on, baby. 40 more cents. Guys, I took I have 350 shares of NXPI. I took 50 off, okay? I'm going to wait for the half number. All right, I'm out 50 shares of NXPI. Okay, 50, and I'm waiting for the half number. All right, 122.50. Is, is going to be my target. If we can get over this area, we might be okay. We've been really struggling, guys. A lot of these things have been going 1R lately and tagging us at break even. So, but, um, all 
All right. I'm going to get that NXPI stop, guys, to 121.20. All right. Yeah, I mean, Ron Barry, look at the spread here for a second. 300.50 by 301.25. You want to trade that? And look at the prints. Just, just take a look in here. Just, just take a look right there where my cursor is. Your spread is 75 cents. How many shares? I mean, do, do you want to trade that? I mean, everybody's a little different. Some people don't mind. How, I mean, when you're saying, wow, how did you not know that when you when you brought it up? Meaning you should be looking at that, right? To get into this stock, you need to know what the level two looks like. Everybody does, not just you. But I mean, you're looking at a 75 cent spread. So if you traded a stock like this, uh, you would easily need a $3 stop loss, which is okay because this stock is moved $15 today. So a $3 stop loss isn't terrible, but it's just not printing, man. I mean, it's not just the spread. The spread, I mean, Amazon has a spread, but at least it prints. All right, guys, I'm out FTI. All right, I'm out FTI. Okay. Um, 33.008. So let me type that up. Q's, man, oh man, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Bars down now. Here we are, guys. Remember I said on the 15 minute? where the area would be, that should be the area the Q's bounce right now. Extended five bars down into triple bottom support. 174 pivot bounce, 174 pivot bounce, 174 pivot bounce. Right there. That should be the area that the Q's have a bounce. All right. We'll see. The we're going to be in trouble on it. Okay. We're going to be in trouble on it. So we'll leave it there and um, see how it goes. Nothing I can do about it, guys. We got to follow the rules. So anyway, guys, you can see using the uh, the hotel 60-inch TV with a laptop, okay, you get a lot done. Out here, what do we have out there? Beautiful ocean view, okay. Not too shabby. See the ocean out there? It's quite nice. It's a beautiful day today. And then we got our trading over here. Even though I'm recording the screen, but you can see that anyway. Up there, a little bit of the chat room. And then uh, put this back over here. About there. And with that, I'm back. T-shirt, man, sweatpants, getting ready to go out to breakfast soon, guys. That's living a life, man. I mean, at the moment, we'll see what happens. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll probably end up making four or 500 bucks today, and that's about it. You know, and we should have made a 1,000 yesterday, a 1,000 today. Uh, and that's just the way it goes sometimes, guys. All right, so I'm going to leave the, um, the recording on for uh, a couple more minutes. All right, but uh, I'm going to step away and uh, let this thing play out because the only trade I have left, I'm just literally waiting for it to play out at this point in time, okay? So, um well, I'll leave it at that, guys, and hopefully our uh, our NXPI gets back up to the 123 area. You know, you can see here, um, right here, we're up about 340 bucks on it. Uh, I really would like to get, you know, 500 bucks, and uh, you know, we'll see what happens. See if we can get up to this range. Maybe we'll pull that order a little bit lower, but it's just struggling to get over this area of 122.25. Uh, and like I said, I'm really really bummed on this. Uh, 
on this FTI. It is what it is, though. All right. So uh, have a good one, guys. And uh, I'll be back here in a second when this thing comes back and hopefully hits target. All right, guys. So what do you think of that montage? I, I hope you enjoyed it. It wasn't the best trading day in the world. It was a bit of a frustrating day. Okay, so SJM, guys, we always start with the daily chart. So this stock was gapping under a bottoming tail bar, right? Under a bottoming tail bar. And I thought, you know what? It's gapping down a little bit too much, but not too bad. A little bit too much, not too bad. I want to find an early entry on this. So I drilled down, guys. All right, we go down to a one-minute chart here. All right. And you can see right there, under $98 right here. We call this a turnaround bar right there, okay? The green bar tried to go higher right here, but was unable to, and it went lower. And this stock went down to $97. I moved my stop to break even, and it would have been a full stop out. And then it dropped again under this area and popped. So my rule is when a trade, when a stock goes 1R, okay? When a stock goes 1R, move along. Okay, so meaning not move along, but when it goes one arm, move my stop to break even. Well, that's what I did on SJM here, getting in there right at, right at, let's take a look here. We got in right at 9701 and we got out at 9701. You see it right here? There's your 9701 mark right down there. Okay, right there. And then boom, it would have stopped out and went higher the rest of the day. Imagine if you didn't take your stop loss on this, guys. Imagine. Let's pull this up to the five minute. Guys, you'd be up, you'd be out of like, three or four times your risk that that's what gamblers do real traders don't do that so let's move on to fti guys this is a stock i don't trade very often because it's an adr an american depository receipt which means it's a foreign stock domiciled in the united states of america okay so this stock gapped up with a little bottoming tail yesterday, gapped up over a red bar with a pivot and room back to about 34 bucks. So basically it had room to go up to $34. So I saw this stock, let's get down to the lower time frame. okay? I saw this stock on a five minute chart, right? And I saw, it, let's go down to the two minute. I think it's a little bit easier to see here, okay? Right, right in this area, it bounced, went up and then right in that $33 range, I said, you know what guys, this thing looks pretty good. All right, so we come back to the five minute, I'm looking at that going, wow, that's a little bit of a three bar play. But we got a little bit lucky because I didn't just use the three bar play stop. I used almost the low of the day at 32.80, 32.75 area. Um, so this thing triggered, went a little higher, and then we ultimately went to break even after it went just short of it in one R, guys. It went about 0.9 R. So I cheated just a little bit. Um, but ultimately this thing pulled back and went on and actually hit target so you could argue we broke our plan because we cheated by one penny um, but at the end of the day i don't feel that bad about it it really didn't look good when the market was bouncing it's an adr which i don't normally trade so i wasn't overly impressed uh, with this trade even though it is a, a three four bar play right here um we could have done a little bit better now the disappointment today honestly was nxpi all right this stock gapped over a red bar which is great shock value over this topping tail over this pivot and it had room back to 125 okay so yeah the gap was five to seven percent which is acceptable it's gapping over a red bar which is great and over a pivot which is also great so we drill down okay go to a two minute chart on this thing and we take a look okay Right in that area of 121, guys, there's a buy setup right there at 121. So we got in at 121 on the buy setup, and we used the low of the day, 120.20 as a stop. So we had about an 80 to 90 cent stop by the time we got filled. So you'll notice um, I got filled at 120.987 to 120.99, really, all right, with an 80 cent stop. And I wanted almost two to one on this thing. Well, guess what? It went up to a dollar. 122.24, which is a dollar 24 on an 80 cent stop. So we're up about 1.5 R, guys. 1.5, and I was looking for two. I was trying to get 122.70, something like that, out of it. And then we moved our stop to break even. Why? Because it went more than one R. I took a little bit of my shares off. Notice I made $269.54 on it. I made $269.54. Uh, and then it came all the way back down. And that's it. it. It never materialized, guys. It never really went to full target. And you go to the five minute and see what happened. 
it just went lower. We would have stopped out full. So going to break even on this and taking some of my shares at 1.5 R, I took half my shares off there at 1.5 and I was looking for a little more of a pop. So this could have easily been a $500 trade. It just didn't materialize. So at the end of the day, guys, you can see at the bottom, I made $203.24. Meh, it's okay. Not great, but that's real trading. That's what happens in the real markets, guys. I'm not out there trying to shill some stuff where I'm telling you, oh, I made $52,000 today. You ever notice the houses they live in when they're making $52,000 a day? I saw one guy said he made $82,000 in one day. And I'm looking around, I'm like, is that a tent? Is that a shack you're living in? How are you making $80,000 a day living in that, okay? Guys, I fly around in private jets, okay? I have Ferraris, I own these things. Uh, I don't own the jet, but um, I have a Ferrari, I own those things. So if you're making eighty thousand dollars late, let's 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 do the math out, guys. In one week, you're making three hundred grand. In one month, you're making one point two million dollars. So you're making ten million, twelve million dollars a year, huh? But you're living in your your mom's basement, or you're sitting up in the attic of a friend's house. Just take a look around, okay? It doesn't make sense. I'm not trying to dog on people, but just use common sense because most of it doesn't make sense. All right, guys, I took my trading and parlayed it into serious real estate success because I had money in 2009, 2010 when nobody else did. So those properties were already worth double the day I bought them, okay? So I don't wanna talk about real estate at the moment, but one day we'll have that conversation too, uh, how to leverage your trading success and turn it into even bigger success. That's actually a great topic. Maybe I'll do a free webinar on that at some point. Um, but guys, I'm trying to show you real trading so the new people, the experienced people can, can understand and go, you know what, this guy's legitimate, this guy's not not trying to bullshit me in fact it's to the point guys look you can see everything at the bottom of my screen you know what i'll even do this i'll take all my filled orders guys filled orders and you tell me right now you think somebody faked that you think somebody just put all that together you can see all the way over to the end of it right there commissions originator number account number order number the type the group name nobody else is willing to do that for you isn't it interesting don't you find that odd that nobody else is willing to do those things for you maybe wait maybe they're trying to hide something magically okay of course they are all right guys so again i'm only doing that not necessarily some people don't like when i do that and call other people out but the truth of the matter is i want you guys to learn from somebody who's honest because there is a lot of bs out there right and it's not just honest but it's profitable you can learn the live traders method quickly guys all right when i say quickly i do mean you'll learn the method quickly you will but to master trading will take you years. It will take you one to three years to become a decent trader. And then after that, even a little more time. So I can teach you the technicals quickly. It's the emotional side of the business that can be a challenge. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that trade review on SJM and XPI as well as FTI, guys. All right. So have a good one, guys. Jared Wesley of Live Traders. I'll talk to you guys soon.